Hey everybody. So today I'm actually coming to you not from South Dakota, but from New Delhi, India. So uh, with my job I actually get to, to travel every once in a while, so I'm actually on mission right now. Uh, I've been here for a few days and I'll be here for a few more. Uh, so yeah, so my research project. I'm actually really interested in this one. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. And I uh, really hope you guys can follow along and get excited about it as well. So my anticipated thesis statement is basically uh, that the idea of separation of church and state um, in the minds of our founders was actually more than just learning and consecutive time frame from John Locke and so on and so forth but uh, actually had a lot to do with Oliver Cromwell and his takeover of Britain during the British Revolution. So just a little bit of a backstory there, Oliver Cromwell was kind of a lesser known politician during the time of the British Revolution. He was given um, high rank within the military because he had a few skirmishes, a few battles that he did well in, so they promoted him. Uh, and then after a little while, uh, he just consecutively continued to rank up. Um, he formed uh, the new army and subsequently gained control of Great Britain. Um, he was actually offered the crown. He refused it, but was still kind of a, uh, a pseudo king over Britain uh, during his reign. Um, during this time frame, Oliver Cromwell actually ruled both politically and religiously. So it was a very intertwined uh, government and religion together type of situation. And this actually affected uh, revolutionary America and post-revolutionary America as far as um, kind of the a general psyche of fear within the American people. And that's where my thesis statement comes in. It's basically saying that there was a direct correlation between Oliver Cromwell and his um, British empire and British rule to a fear of a government body that ruled religiously in the states. Hence, uh, Thomas Jefferson putting in the um, idea of separation of church and state into some of his letters. Now, it's definitely been misconstrued by a lot of people. It wasn't to say that you can't have religion within the government. It was simply saying that government should not be religious, uh, meaning that government should not regulate the people to follow a specific or certain religion, that the people should be free to choose whatever religion that they wanted to. Uh, but again, that idea has been misconstrued and taken out of context uh, by many, many people. And now we're to the point where it's become almost illegal, and in some circumstances, it is illegal uh, to practice any type of religion within a government uh, body. So, a little bit of uh, additional information, uh, kind of background on where the idea of separation of church and state came from. Uh, we've all heard of John Locke. Uh, he was one of the, the first people within the Renaissance period to kind of come up with this idea that church should be here on this side and that you should have government over here and that they should be separate powers, um, one not being able to overpower the other, so on and so forth. And that's coming a lot from the Catholic Church basically being in charge of governments um, by and far throughout the medieval period. In addition to that, you also have the, the founders bringing that knowledge and uh, the knowledge from the British Revolution and that's where we kind of get this uh, draw in together from or to the idea of separation of church and state. So actually uh, looking up articles, doing some research, one of the great ones that I found was uh, by Rock Brenner. This is an article written for the Proceedings of the Massachusetts Historical Society. Uh, it was called Cromwell's Shadow Over the Confederation, the Dread of Cyclical History in Revolutionary America. Um, he opens with a, a story about a letter that was written to George Washington 
um, and an item that was gifted to him. And it was actually uh, an item that belonged to Oliver Cromwell. And within the, the letter, the meaning was very obvious. It was that Washington should not become like Cromwell and that he should step down from government, which this happened right before his one of his final speeches uh, as he was stepping down. So stories like that, um, information like that, it's widely abundant. There's a few authors that have already kind of played or toyed with this idea. I'm hoping just to kind of dig into it further. Uh, the actual project that I'm doing is going to be more of like a uh, PowerPoint, like some of you guys have been doing for our discussion boards. Um, it's just going to be basically me teaching as if I was teaching in a classroom this idea, so this thesis statement. Um, I like that process a little bit better than writing a paper. Uh, <laughs> I can write a paper, but uh, doing a PowerPoint presentation, kind of teaching in like a class, because uh, eventually that's what I would like to do is uh, really interesting um, and I like that format a little bit better. So I hope that uh, my topic is interesting to you guys and hope to have some good discussion about it. Thanks. Have a good one.